Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have Sam wants to make a deposit today in an account paying a 2% effective quarterly interest rate so he can make withdrawals of $500 each year for 20 years. If Sam wants to make the first withdrawal one year from today, how much should his deposit be? All right, and so we know that we're working with the present value of an annuity here because we wanna know how much Sam needs to deposit today in order to be able to make these withdrawals of $500 each year for 20 years. And so let's start by writing down the formula that we use to calculate the present value of an annuity. We know that the present value is equal to some payment X that we're going to be making for every payment period. And that's gonna be multiplied by this notation. We have A and then N, the number of payment periods, and then this bar and then I to represent our interest rate that has the same frequency as our payment period. And we'll get to that in a little bit. And so now let's look at our problem and figure out what each one of these variables is equal to. And so let's start off with the payment amount. We know that Sam wants to make withdrawals of $500 each year for 20 years. And so we know that X is going to be equal to 500. And then we know that there's gonna be 20 of those withdrawals of $500 because he's going to be making that withdrawal each year for 20 years. And so that means that N or our number of payment periods is going to be equal to 20 and that's measured in years. And then let's look for our interest rate. We know that we have a 2% effective quarterly interest rate. And so that's not an annual interest rate. And so I'm gonna label that with J and that's equal to 2%, which is equal to 0 0.02 in decimal form. Now, this is important because this is a quarterly rate, but remember, in order to use this formula over here, the interest rate needs to have the same frequency as the payment period, right? And so Sam is withdrawing that $500 each year, not each quarter like the interest rate is compounded for, right? We have a quarterly interest rate, but we're only making payments or withdrawals once a year. And so because of that, in order to use this formula, we need an interest rate I or an annual effective interest rate. And so the first thing we're going to do is convert this quarterly interest rate. And I'll even write that this is quarterly here. And we need to convert it to an annual effective interest rate. And so if we write down our conversion formula, we know that I, our annual effective interest rate, is equal to one plus J to the power of M or the number of times that J is compounded in a year minus one. And so if we plug in what we know, we'll have that I is equal to one plus 0 0.02 to the power of four minus one. And the power here is four because a quarterly rate, which is what this is, 0 0.02 is a quarterly rate, occurs four times in a year. There are four quarters in one year. And so if we were to plug this into our calculator, 1.02 to the fourth power minus one, I would be equal to, or the annual effective interest rate would be equal to 0 0.082432 and some more decimals, right? So that's going to be our annual effective interest rate that we can now use to find the present value of this series of withdrawals or series of payments, also known as an annuity. And so if we plug in what we know, we'll have that this is equal to 500 times A, and then our N is 20, and our interest rate is I. I'm just gonna write it with I rather than write out all these decimals. Hopefully you know that this is the rate that I'm referring to in this notation. And I tried to make that obvious by making it a different color. And so then if we write out what this notation is equal to, or the formula for the present value of an annuity, this will be equal to 500 times one minus the present value factor to the power of N, which is 20, divided by the interest rate I. All right, so then if we wanna solve here for our present value, we need to remember what the present value factor is equal to, right? And that is that V to the power of T is equal to one divided by one plus the interest rate to the power of T, right? And so in this case, 20 is our value of T. And so if we rewrite this, we will have that this is equal to 500 times one minus one divided by one plus the interest rate, which in this case is 0 0.082432. So we'll have 0 0.082432. And then this is gonna be in parentheses to the power of 20, right? That is what this will become if we follow this, which is what the present value factor is equal to. And then of course, this will all be divided by 0 0.082432. Okay, and so then it's important to remember that when you go to plug this into your calculator, that you save your value of the interest rate if you can, so that when you plug it in here, you are getting the most accurate value you can for your present value. If you don't have a way to save your value in your calculator or you're not sure how to do it, just try to keep as many decimals as you can 
when you plug it into this formula in your calculator. Try not to round this value off or you will get an incorrect answer. But if you were to plug this in your calculator, you would find that the answer or the present value is equal to $4,821.48. This is the present value or the amount that Sam needs to deposit today in order to make withdrawals of $500 each year for 20 years. Let's look at another example. All right, so for our next example, we have Joseph makes a deposit of $6,000 today into an account paying a nominal annual interest rate of 0.09 so that he will be able to make withdrawals of equal amounts twice a year for 30 years starting one year after he makes his deposit. What is the amount of the withdrawals Joseph can make? All right, so this time we are actually told how much of a deposit is being made today. And so that's actually going to be our present value in this scenario. So we can write that the present value is equal to 6,000, right? Joseph makes that deposit today. That is the present value of these payments or these withdrawals that he wants to make. And so what else do we know in this scenario? Well, we know that the account that he's depositing that $6,000 into is paying a nominal annual interest rate of 0.09. And this two right here means that this is an annual nominal rate convertible semi-annually, where the number of periods in a year is two. So I'll write that interest rate down. We have a nominal annual rate convertible semi-annually is equal to 0.09. And then let's see how many payments we are making. We don't know how much the payments are, right? That's what we want to find. The problem asks us what is the amount of the withdrawals Joseph can make, but we can figure out how many of those he's going to make because the problem says he makes this deposit so that he will be able to withdraw equal amounts twice a year for 30 years. So our N or our number of payments will be equal to 30 years times two, right? He's making those withdrawals twice a year for 30 years. And so that means our number of payments N will be equal to 60. And so since he's making those payments twice a year, then that means that the interest rate that we're going to want to use in this case is a semi-annual interest rate. And so thankfully we have a nominal annual interest rate convertible semi-annually. So all we have to do to get the effective semi-annual interest rate is to divide this nominal rate convertible semi-annually by two. So we'll have that our semi-annual rate J is equal to 0.09 divided by two, and that will be equal to 0.045. And so if you're not familiar with nominal annual interest rates and why we can make this calculation, feel free to check out our lesson on that topic as well that I'll have linked here. And so now we're ready to calculate the amount of the withdrawals that Joseph can make. And remember that that's going to be our value of X and we don't know what that is. And so if we set up an equation for this scenario for the present value of these withdrawals or the annuity here, we will have that the present value is equal to the amount of the payments X times this notation. We have A, and then the number of payments, and then that bar, and then our interest rate. And so let's plug everything that we know into this formula. And the first thing we know is that the present value is 6,000. So we'll have that 6,000 is equal to that X, right? We don't know what that X is. That's what we're going to be solving for. We want to find the amount of the withdrawals. That's going to be X. And then we're gonna be multiplying by that notation. And then our number of payment periods is 60. So we have 60 and then our interest rate that matches up, that has the same frequency as the payments is this rate right here, 0 0.045. That is the semi-annual effective interest rate. So we have 0.045, right? It is important that the frequency of the interest rate is the same as the frequency of the payment periods, right? Joseph wants to make those withdrawals twice a year, meaning semi-annually, and then we have a semi-annual interest rate. So that's good. And so now we can rewrite this notation and we'll have that 6,000 is equal to X times one minus V to the power of 60 or our present value factor to the power of 60 divided by 0 0.045. And then we can rewrite this one more time and we'll have that 6,000 is equal to X times one minus, and then let's write out what our present value factor is. We have one divided by one plus the interest rate, so 1.045, and then to the power of 60, right? That is our power here of our present value factor. And then we'll divide by the interest rate, 0 0.045. And so if we were to plug this quantity into our calculator, we would have that 6,000 is equal to X times 20.6, Three, eight. And there are some more decimals there, but I'm gonna round it off there. And then if we divide both sides by this amount, 
Remember to save this value in your calculator. Try not to round if you can. Try to keep as many decibels as possible. So if we divide both sides by that value, then we'll have that x is equal to $290.73. And so this would be our final answer to this problem. This is the amount of the withdrawals that Joseph will be able to make twice a year for 30 years, given the deposit of $6,000 today and this nominal annual interest rate. All right, let's look at one more example. So here's our last example. We have in a series of 10 payments, the first two payments are $20 each, the next four payments are $30 each, and the last four payments are $50 each. The payments are equally spaced and the interest rate is 4% per payment period. What is the present value of the payments given that the first payment takes place one period from today? All right, and so hopefully it's pretty obvious here that we are working with the present value of an annuity. Our problem asks us to find the present value of the payments, and we're told that we have a series of 10 payments. So this is pretty clear that we are working with an annuity, and we want to find the present value. But notice what's different about this problem. Our 10 payments are not all the same. We have two that are $20 each, we have four that are $30 each, and another four that are $50 each. And so it's gonna be a good idea for us to write these down so that we know exactly what we're working with here. So we know we have 10 payments, and we know that two of them are $20, we know that four of them are $30, and we know that another four of them are $50. And then we know that these payments are equally spaced, which is good. That means we're going to be able to use the present value of an annuity formula. And then we know we have an interest rate that is 4% per payment period. So we don't know if it's an annual effective interest rate or what kind of interest rate it is, but we are told that it occurs per payment period. And so we can be sure that we don't have to convert that interest rate. It's going to match up with our payments because it says, Per payment period and our payments are equally spaced. So we can write down that I is going to be equal to 4%, which is equal to 0.04 in decimal format. And so how do we go about calculating the present value for this scenario? Well, let's start with our first two payments, right? We know we have a series of 10 payments, and so let's just start with the first two that are $20 each. So we'll have that the present value is equal, and then we're going to have the amount for that payment, which is 20 multiplied by our formula for the present value of an annuity. So we'll have A and then the number of payments, which we know is two, we have two payments of 20, so I'm gonna write down a two, and then we have that interest rate of 0 0.04. All right, so that's going to cover those first two payments. And so now let's work on the next four. We'll have plus, and then we'll have our $30 payments multiplied by A, and then we have four of these, so we're gonna have four and then the interest rate of 0 0.04. And then let's work on our last four. So I have plus, and then we'll have 50 multiplied by A, and then we have four of these payments and the interest rate of 0 0.04, right? The interest rate is not changing for these payments. All right, and so these two payments are being calculated here. These four payments are being calculated here, and these four payments are being calculated here. However, we're not done yet. We still have something else we need to add in order to calculate the present value for these series of 10 payments. And so in order to figure out what we're missing, we have to think about what is happening here. And so let's start with these first two payments here. We have these two payments of $20, right? These are both occurring for the first two years in the future. So this is good. This starts one year from today, but these payments are starting three years from today, right? We have in one year, we're making that $20 payment. And then in the second year, we're making another $20 payment, but then there's only two of those, right? So then in the third year, we are making a $30 payment. And that's gonna be the case for the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth year. And so because this starts in the third year, we need to bring it back two years by multiplying by the present value factor squared, right? So what this does is it puts these payments at the correct part of our timeline. If we were to draw a timeline for our scenario, where we're starting at time equals zero and we're ending at time equals 10, these first two payments are being made here and here. Time equals one and time equals two. These four payments of $30 are occurring here, 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 and here at time three, four, five, and six. And then our last four payments of $50 are occurring here, 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 and here at time equals seven, eight, nine, and 10. 
And so when you use this formula or this notation for the present value of annuity, it is assuming that those payments are being made at this point right here, time equals one. And so because these payments are occurring starting at year three, we need to bring them back two years, right? We need to multiply by the present value factor of two because this formula is calculating the present value given that those payments start at year one. And so we need to bring it back two years. And the same is going to be true for these payments of $50, right? These are starting in year seven, but we need to bring them back to year one. And so we're gonna be going back one, two, three, four, five, six years, or six payment periods. And so we're gonna be multiplying by V to the sixth power, right? Because that's what the present value factor does. I like to think of it as bringing a value back to the present. That's what a present value factor essentially does. All right, and so hopefully that makes sense about why we need to multiply by these present value factors. We need to bring them back to that first year where we're making that first payment because of how this formula works. Another way you can think about it is you know that if you have different sets of payments like this where they're different amounts, the power of the present value factor that you're gonna to need to multiply it by is just how many payments have already been made, right? So, so far, two payments have been made at the start of this present value calculation, right? We had two payments of 20, so our power is two. And then for our last set of payments, how many payments have been made before this present value is being calculated? Well, we had two payments here and four payments here, which would be a total of six payments. And so that means our power will be six. So that's another way to think about it. If you don't wanna draw a timeline out to kind of help keep things straight, you just have to look at how many payments have already been made. And that will tell you how many payment periods you need to bring that back by multiplying by the present value factor. So I hope that kind of helps you think about what we're doing here and why it's necessary because multiplying by the present value factor can be a very confusing part of these problems. But once you understand this and why it's necessary, these problems become 10 times easier to set up. And so now that we've done that, we can erase this timeline and we can go through and write out the formulas for all these different calculations. And then we can plug it into our calculator and find what the present value is. And so this is going to be equal to 20 times one minus V to the power of two divided by 0 0.04 plus 30 times one minus V to the fourth power divided by 0 0.04, and that's gonna be multiplied by V squared, which is equal to one divided by 1.04 to the second power, and that's gonna be added to 50 multiplied by one minus V to the fourth divided by 0 0.04, multiplied by the present value to the sixth power, which will be equal to one divided by 1.04 to the power of six. All right, so all I did there was rewrite what these notations mean by writing out their formulas, and then I changed our present value factors to what they're actually equal to. And so remember to do that when you plug this into your calculator to change these Vs to what they're actually equal to, right? This one would be one divided by 1.04 to the second power. This V would be one divided by 1.04 to the fourth power. And this V would also be one divided by 1.04 to the fourth power, where that bottom term of your present value factor is one plus the interest rate to the power that your V is being taken to, right? And so if you plug all this into your calculator, you will find that the present value is equal to $281.84. This is the final answer to this problem. This is the present value of these 10 payments. All right, and so those are all the examples for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.